Taiwan ask U.S. help. U.S. send 100,000 troops towards Taiwan to against China in South China Sea. The editor of China's state-backed Global Times newspaper has taken aim at an article published in the professional journal of the U.S. Army which calls for a return of American forces to Taiwan. Hu Zine tweeted his disdain at the piece written by Captain Walker D. Mills from the U.S. Marine Corps in the latest edition of Military Review. In the piece, Mills says that the regional balance of power in East Asia is shifting away from the United States and Taiwan and towards mainland China. China. In his view, this meant that the U.S. needed to consider basing ground forces on the island if it is committed to defending Taiwanese sovereignty. The article headline Deterring the Dragon has Mills warning that the current power balance made a surprise attack on Taiwan more likely and believes that American leadership has to face down international pressure against a deliberate and more global conflict with China. If Chinese forces can prevent U.S. forces from responding reflexively or immediately to PLA or People's Liberation Army aggression, the United States will either accede to a quick PLA victory in a Taiwanese mainland China conflict or be forced to wage a long, costly campaign to re-establish access to Taiwan with a far from certain outcome, Mills wrote. Who? Who edits the paper owned by the Chinese Communist Party's or CCP official publication but reflects a more hawkish Chinese government view? Tweeted the headline of the article with the comment. I must warn people in the U.S. and Taiwan who hold this kind of thinking. Once they take the step of returning U.S. forces to Taiwan, the PLA will definitely start a just war to safeguard China's territorial integrity. China's anti-secession law is a tiger with teeth, who added, referring to the law ratified in 2005 which formalizes Beijing's intentions to act if Taiwan declared independence. The comments by Hu come during a week in which Taiwan warned China to back off after Beijing conducted large military drills and sent fighter jets over the midway point of the strategic Taiwan Strait. Taiwan's defense ministry condemned what it called harassment and threats from the mainland where the CCP wants to absorb the democratic island under its One China policy. Under the 1979 Taiwan Relations Act, the U.S. is legally obligated to help defend the island. If the U.S. indeed deploys troops in Taiwan, it will be a sea change in U.S.-China relations and a trigger for U.S.-China military conflict. From Beijing's perspective, it will destroy the very foundation of PRCU's relations and violate the anti-secession law, which will be a cause for war. Zhu, who is professor of political science at Bucknell University, in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, said that the proposal to send U.S. ground troops to Taiwan grossly underestimates the complexity of the issue. He added that the Taiwan issue is not a military one and cannot be resolved militarily. It is a complex issue with historical, political, diplomatic, economic, security, and great power rivalry dimensions all combined into one. Steve Sang director of the SOAS China Institute in London, said that the threat by the Global Times editor does not seem necessary or justified as he believed there was no indication as yet that the U.S. government was planning to deploy troops to Taiwan. I can see the U.S. improving coordination and cooperation with Taiwan's defense forces as tension across the Taiwan Strait increases. But increasing coordination and cooperation or training together does not amount to deploying troops to Taiwan. U.S. Foreign Policy and World Affairs, the Republican senator and vocal critic of China's human rights record, said he believes Beijing will eventually use force to take over Taiwan, when asked by the event host if Taiwan may be the flashpoint in U.S.-China relations. Rubio said that in both Taiwan and the U.S., 
Those who oppose being linked to China have grown in recent years. Only recently, Washington sent two senior officials to Taipei. According to Rubio, referring to visits by U.S. Health Secretary Alex Azar and Under Secretary of State Keith Cratch in August and earlier this month, respectively. In response, China has been sending more warplanes into Taiwan's Air Defense Identification Zone or ADES as a messaging exercise. Rubio do believe that eventually it is a red line issue for China, and eventually, if necessary, they will move by force to exert their claims on Taiwan. The only thing that would prevent that from happening is if the cost of doing that is too high. To realize that goal, he said he believes the U.S. should not help Taiwan to win an all-out conflict against China. Instead, Washington should assist Taipei to have the capability to raise the cost of military adventurism there to a level that China is not willing to pay, and navigate that very carefully in an effort not to try to trigger a conflict like that from happening. The Florida senator said this is the best hope that we have at this point in managing that relationship, but he also admitted that it is a challenging and tricky one. He cautioned the U.S. to navigate carefully and not be overly provocative, as this could invite a Chinese action at some point in the next decade. The senator's comments were made against the backdrop that the Chinese military has continued to beef up the frequency and level of its military coercion toward Taiwan. Wednesday, two Chinese military Y-8 anti-submarine airplanes entered Taiwan's Air Defense Identification Zone or ADES, the sixth intrusion of its kind in eight days since September 16. Earlier this week, President Tsai Ing-wen toured an Air Force fighter squadron in offshore Pengu County that sits on the front line of the country's air defenses, during which she pledged that Taiwan will not allow others to display military might in its territorial airspace. Also Wednesday, in a speech to lawmakers in the state of Wisconsin, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo blasted China's attempts to exercise influence on U.S. government and politics. During his speech at the Wisconsin State Capitol, Pompeo said the U.S. has watched the Communist Party of China or CPC lobby state-level officials and local interests. Much of that activity revolves around pressing state governments not to recognize, trade with, or otherwise engage with Taiwan. Each of us each of us as public officials must never be complacent or complicit in the CPC's campaign to fracture American society and to silence American voices. Every one of us and I know you'll join me in this must stand up for our sovereignty and for American values themselves.